Okay, great. So yeah, if you could briefly describe the situation with Dershowitz that you wrote about and the non-prosecution agreement and uh, Virginia Guffrey, if that's how you pronounce her name. Yeah, Giefer, I think. But the, um, yeah, sure. So, I mean, in effect, like, I mean, Alan Dershowitz is <clears throat> uh, a known creep, um, as it were. Like, I mean, he's this a, a Harvard law professor and this very uh, w- well-known American lawyer who is a hardcore committed Zionist and has written numerous. I mean, it's, it, I, mean I, 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 I looked on his um, uh, uh, Wikipedia page to, uh, on his kind of bibli- the bibliography section, and it's like it's. It, I think it's it's like ten different books co- with, with titles that play on the case for Israel. Um, uh, he has you know very aggressively gone after people like Norman Finkelstein. Um, Norman Finkelstein is a, a he's the uh, the son of of Holocaust survivors. Um, uh, who is a ardent and very articulate critic of 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 of, of Zionism and and the the, the the Israeli project, as it were, which has been you know, genocidal from 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 the word go, um, the, the, from before the the creation of the founding of the state of Israel, sorry, from the, before the founding of the state of Israel in 1948, um, and and because he exposed Dershowitz as a fraud and a plagiarist. Um, and a propagandist uh, for Israel, uh, Dershowitz destroyed his academic career um, and spread vile, false uh, rumours that um, uh, uh, Finkelstein's mother had been a Nazi collaborationist. So, you know, a really, really charming guy. Um, he has for many years been implicated in um, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's uh, empire of paedophilia, um, for want of a better phrase. Um, because he had a personal relationship with both uh, Jelaine um, and Epstein, um, but not only that, like yeah, he was the he was the guy who uh, Epstein called when he found out that he was under investigation by the Palm Beach uh, uh, police for um, uh, child you know, sexual assault. Uh, he was heavily involved in negotiating um, Epstein's non-prosecution agreement, which was absolutely astonishing. I mean, it's kind of unprecedented in American legal history, the lenience that was afforded to him, despite the fact that police had, the the Palm Beach PD had had identified dozens of young girls who had been abused and groomed and trafficked and uh, offered up for for sex uh, with uh, Epstein's VIP um, uh, friends and associates. Uh, he, I, I, I think it was only, it was, it was 12 months in, in a kind of luxury jail that he received um, with daily work release. So it wasn't really like going to prison. He paid some money to, to some of his victims, not all of them. But I mean, even more remarkably, um, Epstein received um, uh, total uh, immunity from future prosecution. And also there were also named co-conspirators that received the same um, uh, the uh, the same luxury, as it were, and uh, but also any unnamed co-conspirators that may exist. So you're effectively granting blanket immunity to an infinite number of people. I mean, that's extremely um, suspicious and, and raises very obvious questions about about whether Epstein was protected and by who. Um, I think the answer is yes, and the CIA and Mossad. Um, but that's a, maybe a discussion for another time. But yes, yeah, so like a Dershowitz is. Is directly was directly accused by um, Virginia Giefer, who uh, who um, has uh, she, she, she 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 claims that that there were multiple kind of Epstein clients who raped her, starting from when she was just sixteen. One of them, um, it seems, it's seemingly confirmed, was the British royal Prince Andrew. Um, there is a photo of them together and he paid her an enormous amount of money out of court after she took legal action against him. Um, Jelaine Maxwell as well, um, she settled out of court with Giefer due to allegations that Maxwell had been um, involved in her in her sexual abuse to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, she, uh, Giefer has accused um, Dershowitz of, yes, of, 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 of raping her and she brought a, a, a legal action against him in, Jan- in January 2015. Um, th- it, it, this was dropped in um, November 2022 and Giefer uh, claims that she may have made a mistake in identifying him as her rapist. Um, it, it, that That's quite murky. But, but these newly unsealed files 
are really fascinating. And they, they show Dershowitz engaged in all sorts of skullduggery to try and um, illegitimately and potentially uh, 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 criminally um, unearth um, information and documentation that was protected by attorney-client privilege, which is, I mean, that's a very, very um, uh, you know, in, important legal protection. It's one of the oldest in, um, in in US legal history. There is an ongoing court case against the CIA for breaching Julian Assange's um, uh, uh, attorney-client privilege by spying on um, his uh, discussions with his lawyer in, in the Ecuadorian embassy and uh, recording them and, and um, uh, spying on 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 his lawyers uh, for that precise reason. Um, but yes, like Dershowitz, despite his apparent innocence in Geefer's case, uh, 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 filed a legal motion for her lawyers to hand them over because they were suing him for defamation after he claimed that they were dishonest ambulance chasers. And then when that didn't work, he he subpoenaed her to test to give a deposition. Um, in this defamation trial, uh, and was asked, she was asked multiple questions that were covered by attorney-client privilege. So, I mean, he was clearly determined to find out what she knew and what she was saying, which, if he was innocent, um, you, you, you might think was a bit strange, um, to, say, to say the least. But, yeah, I mean, there's all, the, 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 he, she, she's not the only person to have accused him, and this is this is referenced in um, the uh, in, in the newly unsealed files. There's a, a woman known as Jane Doe three who claims that as a child she well I think she was 15. Um, she was raped repeatedly in various locations um, by by Dershowitz, um, and uh, it, it, he it, he has nothing to say um, about that. Now, what's quite interesting is. Um, Dershowitz's role in in negotiating the the, the non prosecution agreement, um, he admitted in July 2020 uh, after just after uh, uh, Jelaine Maxwell was arrested after a, a, you know, a bizarre um, a, a attempt to identify where she was and she was in the US the whole time. Um, the it, it, he, he wrote an op-ed for The Spectator called the, the Jelaine Maxwell I Knew, where he was talking about how brilliant she was and how she deserves the um, uh, presumption of innocence and how you know we don't know how her trial is going to play out. Of course, she was convicted. But it, it, he mentioned in this in this article that he, he had explicitly negotiated um, a, a, a blanket immunity for crimes uh, that, that she may have committed as a, a named co-conspirator, and that's the first time that had been acknowledged. Now, the I thought at the time that it was interesting that um, the allegations. Wait, uh, just to sorry, just to clarify something. Uh, so, Galen was actually a named co-conspirator that received uh, immunity. She wasn't one of the one because I, I thought that she was one of the ones that was covered under um, any unnamed co-conspirators too. So she was actually named. Well, Dershowitz, Dershowitz claims that she was, yeah. Like, like I mean, in this okay. in this op-ed, which I cite in my article. I mean, either way, he seemed convinced that she was going to be insulated from 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 prosecution for crimes. Now, um, I thought it was interesting at the time when she was when she was arrested that the charges related to 1994 to 1997, and I suspected that the NPA might have covered. Um, uh, uh, crimes that she committed after this time, um, and so it, 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 this is this is kind of reinforced by the fact that the um, in the newly unsealed files, um, the, the Giefer's lawyers specifically asked Jelaine to hand over any material related to her legal relationship with Dershowitz, and they they, they sought to determine whether the pair had a, a joint defence agreement uh, uh, and had end, entered into one at any point since 1999. I mean, that kind of tells me that they knew that there was such a thing, um, and that yes, that, that, that they had they had arranged for a sorry, Jelaine and Dershowitz had arranged for for a joint defence, which again rather suggests that he was implicated in um, Epstein's crimes. Allegedly, Epstein pleaded the fifth and uh, invoked his right against self incrimination when he was in, uh, asked about Dershowitz and whether he was involved in sexual abuse. Apparently, several other witnesses did so as well, which again kind of raises suspicions about his uh, um, about about his actions and complicity. Um, yeah, like 
it, it, the, the newly unsealed files specifically make the, in a it's a legal filing. It explicitly makes the charge that Dershowitz negotiated um, the the non prosecution agreement to protect himself um, from, which is I mean, it's just an absolutely extraordinary um, conflict of interest and you know, perversion of justice um, in the in, in 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 the grossest terms. Now, I mean. It, it, something that kind of it really reinforces the notion that, that Dershowitz himself is protected one way or another, or at least he, he, he very much thinks he is, is that Israel um, when I mean, at the start of January, South Africa that instigated proceedings against Israel in the International Court of Justice for committing genocide in Gaza, um, the indictment, which you can read online, proceedings are now underway, is extremely detailed. It would be a miracle um, if uh, Israel wasn't um, indicted for genocide, but based purely on the on the statements of Israeli government officials, where they openly talk about purging Gaza of all Palestinians, um, and then uh, both before and after the war started, I might add. But yeah, the, it was it was reported after um, this indictment um, was was levelled that Benjamin Netanyahu, who, who and his government, they they favoured Dershowitz to protect them um, in, at, at the ICJ, which is just, I mean, given his background, is just absolutely astonishing. And Dershowitz was openly boasting about it at the same time as stating that he appears 137 times in the, the unsealed documents. Um, that, that suggests to me a, a mindset of total impunity. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's not something that, you know, like a, a non-psychopath would, would understand, really. It's like you're boasting about, oh, there are all these documents talking about me in relation to sexual assault. And, ooh, I'm also, of, of, of minors, I might add, I, I, but, ooh, I'm also um, been tapped to represent Israel. Uh, I mean, it, it, he clearly has like no, he clearly has like he clearly has like no shame. I mean, very quickly he was dropped, no no doubt due to the backlash um, against this, and that, that it seems a kind of rather obscure British lawyer has been chosen to to represent them instead. Now, I mean, I, I also think that that, that that Israel not understanding or apparently the Israeli government apparently not having a preconceived notion that Dershowitz was a was a deeply controversial choice and was it was in itself going to result in scandal. It comes from the fact that like Israel is actually a deeply sick society and I mean, Zionism is a very sick ideology. Um, it is a safe haven for paedophiles because they're so desperate for, for people to fill the lands that they, they illegally annex and settle and claim. Um, and purge of their their Palestinian populations, they will accept anyone, almost anyone who's on the on on the uh, kind of fleeing justice, you know, a fugitive, um, as a, as a settler, and then they won't deport them. Um, it, it, this has happened many times to the extent that there are like dedicated settler communities in Israel, which are comprised entirely of paedophiles. Um, which, is, which is just abs- it, 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 which is just astonishing, and again, like you know, un- unbelievable. Now, I might add that Ehud Barak, who was um, a, a former I- I- Israeli leader, um, he is heavily implicated in the Epstein scandal as well. He had a personal relationship with Epstein. Um, that he has been accused of committing sexual assault against against um, you know, underage girls. Um, it, 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 it's uh, it, yeah, it, it's deeply disturbing, and also Barak uh, run has a company which is it's a cybersecurity company, as so many Israeli companies are, which boasts about the fact that it can uh, produce, uh, it can edit CCTV footage, and it's like when you bear in mind that the, the numerous people have have alleged that Epstein's cameras were uh, sorry Epstein's um, many properties all over the world were like coated in CCTV cameras um, and that he may well have been um, trying to get sexual dirt on um, a compromat on wealthy powerful uh, people um, I mean in that context like one of his closest associates and an accused child rapist concocting um, uh, creating a technology to edit video footages is really 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 disquieting yeah, absolutely. And um, a little bit on the media coverage of this. So I, mm. I, I, when I read your story, I started comparing it to the other stories I was reading 
about uh, Virginia Virginia G- Gifa. Is that is that how you said you pronounce Gifa, it? Gifa, yeah, I think Gifa, yeah. And um, I noticed something kind of extraordinary. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised by this at this point, but it was still kind of surprising reading it. But uh, basically, in all of the mainstream media articles that I read uh, about Gifa, or most of them, mm-hmm. the there was they claimed that she. They always made sure to claim, and sometimes in the head, that she contradicted herself in these documents. Like that was the story. She contradicted herself by saying she never flew on Clinton Clinton's plane in a 2016 deposition. Uh, and there's the contradiction comes from a comparison to previous statements she made in a Daily Mail piece. I don't know if you know about this, but yeah, um, yeah, she basically said in the Daily Mail piece. She actually said exactly what she said in the deposition, because if you read the, de- the Daily Mail piece closely, she doesn't hmm. make the claim that she flew on a helicopter with Bill Clinton. She only makes the claim that uh, Ghislaine Maxwell uh, flew Bill Clinton on a plane, which is what she said yeah. in the deposition as well. And But, but nonetheless, uh, you know, I read in several articles the same thing. She contradicted herself. That was the big reveal in these yeah. Uh, uh, articles. And then also another victim, Sarah Ransome or Ransomi. I don't know how to yeah. pronounce her name either, but uh, she was discredited in every mainstream article that I read uh, because they kept saying, because I get her big claim was that there's sex tape. This, her friend has, uh, was in sex tapes that exist of um, Clinton, Trump, and Richard Branson with minors. Mm. And every article discredited her by kind of painting her as this like emotionally crazy woman who uh, retracted her claims in the very same email that she yeah. made the claims. And when you read her retraction, she actually doesn't retract anything. She just says, I shouldn't have told you this because now my life is going to be ruined. She says yeah. something along those lines. Well, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. I, mean, I was just going to say that it's what's, I mean, it, the, the fact that, I mean, it's kind of unsurprising um, uh, if, uh, that, that they're being that they're being attacked. Um, I mean, this is very much like Dershowitz's um, uh, strategy is just to like completely discredit them. Um, it, it's worth pointing out that uh, what Epstein seems to have like done to people, uh, particularly like you know like like very, like very young girls, um, was would have been by definition inevitably like deeply traumatizing. Um, I mean, there are there is a witness statement of I think it was a friend of Epstein's who went over and they found this like young girl, like sobbing and shaking, like just hysterically upset, um, who then went on to tell them that like she was being used as a sex slave. And, uh, and yeah, that was like clearly just like, you know, ravaged by what was happening. So like, it's kind of, it's kind of like, um, not particularly surprising that these, (laughs) that the, that that, that, like stories might change. Um, or that they might be inconsistent, or they they their uh, their, their their accounts may be like quite you know, just just wild because yeah this is like deeply traumatizing stuff like deeply traumatizing. Um, I mean it, yeah like the, a, a lot of the attempt. I mean I think that like I, I noted a British newspaper had kind of very quietly acknowledged at the bottom of an article that um, uh, well uh, this witness has withdrawn their 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 claim to the extent that they don't want to talk about it but they did mention that they had sex with a a well-known british prime minister and then it's like the end of the article it's like well why was she not asked about this why was this not probed like like and it's just like it, it, there's it, it's it's quite it's quite extraordinary and it's like i think that another really interesting aspect of this and i've got something forthcoming on great for, for gray zone um uh, uh, as we speak uh, it might may well be out by the time this interview is published that like the, the one one of the really interesting kind of components of, of the reporting is there's no discussion of his death, which remains or alleged suicide, which remains like suspicious as hell. Like it, 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 there are all manner of things which have been forgotten, you know, by design about what happened. You know, his own lawyers saying that they didn't think that he killed himself and reporting him being very happy and like optimistic because, I mean, it, 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 he he probably had a very good reason to believe that, well, I'm going to, I've got so much dirt on people, they're not going to go near me. This is just a bit of silly business. Like, you know, he voluntarily surrendered himself. He was in France, which doesn't deport people to the US, he could have just stayed there, you know, like, the, but he voluntarily went back to the US to face the music. Um, like, that's been forgotten. 
I mean, his former cellmate, who was, uh, uh, surname is Ray's, I forget his first name, who was like receiving payments from uh, Epstein's lawyers, no doubt, to like protect Epstein, has openly stated that he thought that there was no way that Epstein could have hung himself. Because Epstein was like six foot tall, he wasn't sure. And he, he, the, the, it, it, it was felt it would be impossible for him to hang himself from his bunk. Um, all sorts of stuff about, you know, like the vanishing CCTV and people not being on duty when they were meant to be. And then the, the, the prison guards who allegedly were, were, he- were held responsible for uh, allowing the suicide to happen, it, it, albeit by accident, it's been forgotten that they were charged with um, all manner of like very serious crimes for like that for their negligence, and then they, they all just got off scot free in the end. Like that, that that's all been forgotten. And I think that there's also uh, I've got some Bureau of Prison documents that I report on in the article. There's all sorts of weirdness where the, the BOP they um, they, they, they spoke, uh, they tried to frame very quickly the narrative that he'd killed himself in the media and were before there had even been, you know, a, a forensic pathologist had looked at what happened. And they did things like they used a quote that in, in an interview uh, with a prison psychologist, uh, uh, Epstein stated, oh, well, like I'm a coward. And this was used by the Bureau of Prisons and other like, US government officials, and indeed it's the mainstream media to claim, well, um, this this was a sign of suicidal intent. But the actual context in which he says that is, I'm a coward, so I would never harm myself. And it's like, <laughs> this has all been forgotten. And it's they just all left been, out that part. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like, it's, it's completely, I mean, it's just, it's a, an astonishing distortion. And, and it's just like in plain sight. Like the, this is, yeah, this is the, the, the documents. I, some of the documents I have have been reported on by the, the New York Times. They've omitted that, um, I, 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 which is, can only be deliberate. And I think that, yeah, that it, the, 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 the fact that, well, this extremely wealthy um, financier who has, I mean, his, his sources of income seem very, very odd. He doesn't actually seem to have been running all of these funds, we were told he he did, um, who rubbed shoulders with every single conceivable famous person in the West or, or um, you know, anyone of any prominence whatsoever over decades was, it seems, well known to... Uh, well known by his associates to have a liking for young girls and that Maxwell was involved in procuring them for him and for his enjoyment and the enjoyment of his friends. Um, Suddenly ends up in jail, uh, like dies in mysterious circumstances, allegedly by suicide. There's no video, there's no evidence that that, that the official account is correct and then it's forgotten about. Like that in itself is hugely suspicious. And I think that, I mean, there was a New York Times article published after he died, where there was a a, a, a reporter was talking about how um, Epstein had openly told him that he had dirt on a lot of famous people, and that the, the, the reporter had kept this uh, secret until Epstein died because they had an agreement that what he was saying was off record. Um, I mean, you know, you would think that in that context, you would speak to like law enforcement or something. Um, maybe, maybe, or like you would, uh, you would like kind of raise some kind of alarm bell that like this, this, uh, this, per, this uh, reclusive billionaire um, who was a convicted um, rapist at that uh, and, and and sex trafficker at that point was boasting about having dirt on 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 politicians and powerful people. Uh, it, all of it's just extremely weird, and I think that it speaks volumes about like yeah the the, the media as and indeed. Um, law enforcement and security and intelligence agencies and probably a lot of foreign governments have a massive vested interest in people not looking at this. And the total lack of serious investigation into his death is probably a testament to that. Yeah. If, and, it, if and, he died in the first place, if he's actually dead in the first place, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And and the, the thing uh, uh, that's even... It's because you you mentioned how it's like pretty normal that uh, women women that have undergone this like you know years long of just yeah. engaging in this uh, sexual trauma um, yeah. as their job basically might you know get some details wrong when they're uh, recalling things. But the thing that's crazy about these two specific cases that I brought up is that I mean at least from my reading of the Daily Mail, Mail article, uh, Gifa did not even contradict herself she didn't say anything Mm. different but yet they latch on to the and and you know if anything it was a critique of how the daily mail article was written because 
there was there basically this quote right after she says, uh, Ghislaine flew to, you know, I forgot X location to pick up Bill Clinton in her big black helicopter that uh, Jeffrey Hep- the Epstein had just bought her. Mm-hmm. And then in the following paragraph, she says in the Daily Mail article, uh, she said something like she was always scared to fly with Ghislaine because she didn't know she could fly well. But Bill Clinton's Secret Service guys and him said that she flew very well. So I guess those two uh, mm. statements lining up next to each other make it seem like uh, Gifa was basically saying that she was on the plane with he- the helicopter with Epstein. But she never did say it. And yet all these yeah. articles are saying she or several articles that I read are saying she contradicted herself. And the same thing with Ransom. So it's. It's just really curious because I understand that, like, you know, that all these powerful people um, seem afraid to basically uh, really get into the weeds on the Epstein story. But at the same time, I would think like the individual journalists working at these um, uh, places would kind of, I don't know, be interested in this to some extent. But it seems like they aren't or they've kind of gotten some kind of um, top down message that to kind of stay away from these questions and to not, uh, to to not question these things in the way that maybe we are right now. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, again, it's just, I think it's, it's kind of like limited hangout. It's like the, 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 they're kind of admitting because they, because there is, is, is such grassroots public interest in, in, in this. They are admitting the absolute minimum distorting where necessary and like basically telling people you know not to look um, in that direction. I mean, interestingly, I'm kind of reminded of, I, I remember like when the many of the WikiLeaks um, drops came, there was an enormous, enormous amount of like mainstream media articles in, uh, and kind of op-eds by columnists in The Guardian and, 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 and other um, mainstream outlets, which were basically saying, don't bother looking at it, it's a waste of time. And it's like, I think it's the same, it's the same, it's, it's, it's nothing's interesting in it, or nothing, there's nothing surprising, like don't bother, don't bother. Um, and I think it's the, same, it's the same now, where it's like, you know, I went through with a fine tooth comb, you know, 800 pages of documents. There's all sorts of stuff which I didn't report on. Um, in the new files, which is, I think we've had like five or six separate releases now. There's all manner of really interesting excerpts in them that, that independent journalists and researchers have posted about online, which have gained enormous traction. And it's like, <clears throat> I think that it, the, the the fact that the the yeah the grand total of the media's interest has been you know a few scattered headlines saying oh they raise questions um and but oh, some of the witnesses might have lied or it appears that they did um just move just just move on with your life um i think that that that, that can only come as like you know, a di- you know a conscious decision has been made to ignore all of this stuff like there's no way there's no i mean a, like a serious journalist going through like this material would very easily find so the uh, basis of a substantive sto- story or many more um you know it's not I, I would imagine there's probably been a a briefing has gone round from from the US government about how to frame the story and and what you the, the limits of what you can um uh say um uh, you know i mean there's there's all sorts of stuff in the in the files about prince andrew which is like I saw that there was a headline which stated, "Yes, Prince Andrew's named, but there's nothing new in here." And it's just like, like, why, why are you telling people to not look at this like primary source evidence? Like, I mean, where does that where does that come from? And I think I think you know, I mean, just as more generally, and just to tie this every, into everything with like the war in Ukraine, is that like the the media has shown itself since the start i mean it, it the, the media lies um about the war in ukraine like since, since since the start i mean you know we were told for many months that it was this absolutely catastrophe for russia and that you know that the, the ukraine was killing millions of russian soldiers and destroying like tens of thousands of tanks and shooting there were you know, like ukrainian pensioners were like downing russian jets with like jars of pickles and stuff and a large number of people believed this and it served to keep this going and then suddenly if, you, if you've been following it like very intensely like i have it wasn't that abrupt to shift but i think for the average person particularly given that you the war in ukraine basically vanished from from um main, main, uh, the mainstream media and yes numerous uh, western outlets removed their dedicated war in ukraine sections without fanfare or warning and it's like like for a lot of people it was a very abrupt shift 
um, in in terms of like the narrative and how it was being framed. It's like, oh, it's this glorious success for Ukraine, and they're pulling off this successful this this, this incredible David and Goliath underdog uh, vi- victory, and they're going to you know like march on Moscow and force Putin to sign a, a, a su- su- surrender. To oh, actually, like everyone's dead. And like, <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing we can do like that. Like that was really jarring. And I think that you know, more and more people are realizing that they're, that they are being lied to. Um, I, I, likewise with the war in Gaza, like all of these, you, you know, OSINT people online who have been following the war in Ukraine and making all sorts of claims about Russian loss and failure um, and, uh, and the daily posting about, you know, vehicle losses and, and troop losses have nothing to say about what's happening in Gaza. And it's like, why? Like, but when there's like videos and all sorts of you know, open source evidence emerging, like just coming out every day of Israeli war crimes, but they don't, they, they, all of the like, people, like organizations like Bellingcat, um, which is a you know, Western government funded um, clearinghouse for intelligence agency um, black propaganda, um, is like silent. They have nothing to say. Um, and, and in that context, more and more people are turning towards um, independent media, if not, um, you know, like, you know, I've received many messages over the past, like, you know, the past year from people who, said, who have expressed an interest in getting into, to like, kind of independent citizen journalism, which I think is fantastic. Um, you know, like, the, 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 the Grey Zone's, uh, like, written, your monthly uh, visitors is through the abs- absolute roof because we have consistently challenged narratives um, about what's happening in Ukraine and why, and we've been consistently proven right. Um, and whereas the legacy media has been consistently pro- proven to be like outright lying. And I think there was another interesting op-ed at the end of last year that came out in Spectator, which was like, I, I, it was, I, I think she's a, a fiction author, which probably helped, but she'd written extensively about the war in Ukraine. And she stated that she, she was like very, very, very drawn to this narrative of, um, you know, like plucky underdog Ukraine fending off the vile Goliath bully of Russia. And she was really, really drawn into it. And it had become as the scale of, of the Ukraine's defeat and you know, like, uh, you know, people dying in such vast numbers became increasingly clear to her. She just pretended it wasn't happening because it made her sad. And it's like I think that's the atti- that is the, actually the attitude of of, of 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 the mainstream media as well is that like they they that they for a very long time felt that they had a vested in kind of emotional and moral interest in not reporting on reality because it just felt nicer, um, you know. Uh, and, and I mean, which 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 tells you like all you need to know about the way that the, the media operates, and of course. The, um, intelligence agencies, uh, security services, and governments are well aware that um, journalists are suckers for simplistic kind of yeah, like cinematic narratives, which is why that's what most of their propaganda is engaged in. Um, I just have one one question on 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 this. Uh, I, I'm sure you saw yesterday, uh, Alan McLeod. Uh, mm-hmm. ZEI Squirrel uh, and True and On Pod, I think another account were suspended from Twitter or mm-hmm. X um, now. And it seems like there is some sort of pattern of, of, of these accounts that have been reporting specifically on, on the atrocities in Gaza and now with this growing sort of, uh, you know, Epstein, revel- these growing Epstein revelations that they're, they are, I mean, they, they, they've been reinstated. So it's, it's just so strange that this is happening. But do you see uh, kind of the, this crackdown happening on social media, uh, specifically platforms like like X, uh, you know, increasing as it goes along? Do you fear for your for your own account? Have have you been suspended before? No, I haven't. I mean, I think that I thought it was I thought it was quite straight. I mean, I my first reaction because I mean I know I know Alan personally and I have done for many years. He's a lovely guy on top of being a great journalist. Yeah. Um, I uh, I was shocked. Like when I logged in and saw that, like it was just, it was just, it blew my mind because he has somehow managed to avoid um, being, despite the, the the kind of things that he tweets about being usually ripe for soft censorship and shadow banning, um, even under free speech uh, defender Zion Musk, um, that like yeah, that the the that the, 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 he somehow managed to avoid the throttling and and whatnot that usually. Um, that usually attends people who you know dare not take the national security, the the, the mainstream national security line in all matters. Um, 
uh, and had built up a huge following as a result, which it seems to have been artificially reduced since he since his reinstatement. But yeah, like I mean, I think it is really worrying because it's like again, I think that there's a kind of brazenness. That, like previously, when um, Twitter like censored pe- like censored people, they would go for the low hanging fruit first, like obviously objectionable people. Like, you know, Milo Yiannopoulos, like Alex Jones, like people who do, who do say like vile things um, and offensive things. And then that th- this was, again, manufacturing consent because then liberals get on board with it. And it's like, oh, actually, this is not a free speech issue. And then they're the ones that get affected like next. But yeah, it was it, 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 I mean, I. Um, when I when I re-registered on Twitter in in, in 2021, um, it took like the, the best part of like eight, um, 18 months for my followers to get up beyond like about 5,000. Um, th- th- I'm fairly sure that Twitter was employing a team of people to prevent um, uh, people seeing my tweets uh, without outright banning me. And like there was, when I was reporting on Paul Mason's leaked emails um, in the sum- in, in summer 2022, there was this remarkable phenomenon, which literally happened almost every day, where I would almost hit 10,000 followers and then I would drop down by a few hundred. And it just kept on happening. And subsequently, we found out via the Twitter files, the, the releases, that there was a rule in Twitter HQ, which was engineers... Um, once say, an account had 10,000 followers, they had to get permission to throttle it from their superiors. Um, until uh, under that number, they could do whatever they wanted without without permission or oversight. So yeah, like Twitter seemingly employed a team of people to prevent people from seeing my tweets. Um, I mean, that's one of the the, the few positive outcomes of um, of Musk taking over is that you know I'm now up to well over forty thousand. It's quite remarkable, really. But uh, but yeah, I think there's something that we do need to worry about because it, 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 they know they can just get away with it. Like I, there was a huge. Uh, you, you might even argue that there was that this was like a this was a uh, that because it was so coordinated and it was all of these very prominent. I mean, like Ken Klippenstein um, getting taken down. I mean, that's like I'm you know not the biggest fan of of, of, of Ken's of Ken's work, but like I mean, he's a very prominent um, uh, like journalist, and he was just gone. Um, that because I think because of the. The scandal, and because of an enormous number of people, including very prominent people, um, uh, attacking Elon and asking him to give an account of what happened, and he he gave his kind of mealy mouth. Oh well, it was an accident. Um, oh, that you know, it was probably because they were all being mass reported. Uh, yeah, like you know, nothing to see here. But it's like I I do wonder whether it was an experiment to see if they could just get away with it. You know, like mm-hmm. because uh, I think that actually, there, yeah, that, that, that there is a culture of of, uh, of impunity there increasingly, and it's like, I mean, I think we might have discussed this when I was last on the show, but like, I mean, particularly since the war in Ukraine began, but I mean, it's 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 very marked like under um, uh, like since the, since the genocide in Gaza began too, is that Western governments are just completely brazen about censorship about banning people um, and, and, and or, or organizations. And it's like, I mean, in, in, in the UK it, 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 and amongst many other European countries, it, it's effectively becoming legal to express Palest- Palestine solidarity. I mean, in Germany, the, the phrase from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is illegalized. It's completely legal to say it publicly. You can end up in jail. Um, it, I, I, and they're, they're just doing this despite the fact it damages their, their claims to... Um, you know, be bastions of human rights and free speech because they, yeah, they can just, they think they can get away with it. Um, Alan, after he got suspended, open, stated on Twitter, like he he asked his his followers if they could kindly, um, you know, raise this issue with Twitter and Twitter support um, uh, in order to get his, his account back. Um, that's what we need to be doing always, like when we encounter like you know like censorship. Because if we let it slide, they will just you know, give them an inch and they'll take a mile. You know, um, I mean, I, I'm no fan of Donald Trump, but I was one of the I was one of many people who, uh, when his Twitter account got banned, um, thought that this was a harbinger of something very very bad ahead. And a large number of people on the left in the US and Britain uh, rejected that because they hated Trump. And then you know, many of these these same people ended up getting banned themselves for expressing the wrong opinions about stuff like Palestine. So yeah, that you know that's how censorship works. Um, we need to fight back in real time. 
Yeah, and Musk, uh, uh, I think he recently prevented or he banned Hamas's Twitter account or something like that, right? Did you hear about that? Oh yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they registered, they registered, and 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 almost immediately, like they got they got shut down. I mean, I think there is a huge aspect of of um, you know like narrative control in all of this, and it's like you know you got to bear in mind that one of the reasons that Russians um, like got cut off from so western social media was so the you know average russian citizens most of whom don't use twitter anyway um they use telegram and vk you know, local um alternatives uh so they couldn't challenge lies about russia i mean you know it, it, the, uh, 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 for, so for example i mean i i know people including westerners who who were living in russia who were were like kind of rolling around on the floor laughing reading about all the coverage of of western sanctions on russia because there there have been zero material impact to their lives whatsoever and it's like in that context when western governments are really pushing that like oh these sanctions are not only necessary but a really good thing and they're going to destroy the russian economy you can't have anyone saying oh actually this hasn't happened like you know what I mean? And it's just like it's like to, it's like total narrative control. They're obsessed with controlling the, the narrative, and I think that actually that that again, for all of its faults, Musk's stewardship of Twitter has actually has allowed um, alternative dissident voices to get audiences that they would not not otherwise have. And he's probably been severely um, reprimanded for it behind closed doors. Um, I, 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 but I think it's it's probably too useful for shaping perceptions, um, and indeed narrative management, uh, for for it to be banned or shut down. Um, so I mean I think yeah, the, the, you know we are told that you know social media represents a kind of p- public online um, democratic space. Well, if that's the case, we need to take ownership of, of it ourselves. Yeah, absolutely, and. Um... I think that's a good place to uh, conclude our talk. Um, one, one, one thing, uh, just one, one, one more point that, uh, you know, the thing about Musk, and I, I am sure that he has taken flack and things for allowing more people on Twitter. And I do think that Twitter is generally more of a free space than it was before and everything. Yeah. But it's, it's almost like it's a more effective form of censorship because it gives this, it's, it gives a better illusion of free speech than I think the previous Twitter regime offered because, um, uh, you know, now you can talk about things like COVID on Twitter uh, in a dissenting way, mm. which is nice. You know, you're not going to get banned for saying that, uh, like, you know, literally like true things uh, like the Twitter files mm. revealed, like people were getting banned for quoting CDC, CDC data that was um, <laughs> yeah. inconvenient to the vaccine narrative and things like that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like Musk has stated that he that I. Uh, Musk and I think the new CEO of Twitter have said like freedom of speech is not freedom of reach. And it's like, well, yeah, it actually is freedom of reach. That's kind of the whole point of freedom of speech mm. is, you know, best ideas rise to the top. And also um, he's openly stated that he wants to uh, make Twitter into the American version of WeChat, which would basically just centralize all digital identification and finances yeah. and things like that into one. Platform. Oh yeah. But he's working, he's working with an Israeli cybersecurity company. Um, you know, they yeah. do get everywhere. They get, they end up everywhere. Um, riddled, but like, yeah, they, they, in, in, on, on biometric ID, which is like completely insane. So, I mean, again, that's something to like be extremely careful, um, keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, thank you for talking to us, Kit. Uh, that was a pleasure. a pleasure. It was great as always. Yeah. And if you could let people know, where to follow you on social media, where to look out for your articles and just tease anything that you have coming up. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, like I mentioned, I've got some some more stuff coming on Epstein um, um, with, with Grey Zone. But uh, I mean, we're, we're heading up to the, the 25th anniversary of NATO's destruction of Yugoslavia, which is like a kind of key foundational event in like the kind of modern American empire, uh, which set a blueprint for subsequent proxy, you know, direct and indirect Western interventions like across across the world. Um, I have a huge story coming on that base and some declassified files which have not been uh, reported on before. So that's something to watch out for. Um, but you can find me on Twitter. It's just Kit Clar- It's just at Kit Clarenberg. Um, and uh, I I link my Substack. Um, it's free to subscribe, but there are, you, you, you can choose to support my work if you if you if if you wish. It would be great gratefully received. Um, uh, that's in my my Twitter bio. So see you there, perhaps. Great, thank, thank you, Kit. 
My pleasure. Cheers.